Hello everybody, this is Simon Tisland from NITH and this is my first level design tutorial and today we are going to have a basic introduction to the Unreal Editor for Unreal Tournament 3. This editor is the, almost the same editor as uh, UDK but there there are some slight differences. Uh, this one, uh, this editor is a bit older than uh, UDK, but uh, there's not many differences. Although <coughs> the nice thing about this editor is you get more 3D models, uh, and that is basically why I'm using this. This because I'm not a 3D model modeler myself, so I can't make my own 3D assets. So I use this editor because it's better to use for level designers uh, so you don't have to make your own 3D models and in UDK you don't get as much uh, 3D assets included so you can kind of restrict it to what you can do and your creativity <coughs> I'm sorry about my voice, I'm really, really sick now, but I just had to make this tutorial now, and yeah, I'm sorry for my voice cracking and etc. I hope you can bear with me. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, in this basic uh, introduction to my tutorial series, we're going through uh, the basics of uh, UDK, and and the start of how to make a map and most of you guys have probably seen basics of many other videos where you see um, creating small cubes and whatnot I'm gonna get, go and do a larger map maybe and just uh, make a small deathmatch map and yeah <coughs> make it uh, or teach you how to or do a faster tutorial so you kind of get more into it in a faster way anyway just let's just <coughs> see what we have here okay so this is the editor itself and you have four videos uh, at the moment I have a tree split option um, we can yeah, uh, anyway, you have this window here, uh, which are your uh, 3D pre pre preview. And this is the <coughs> window where you can see how everything looks in a 3D environment. Then you have a uh, other uh, window here, which are the top view. And here you can see there's no. 3D model, models or anything, um, but you can change that. Yeah, I will go through that later. <coughs> uh, basically, these windows will help you to view your entire level through different perspectives. Um, so yeah, uh, that's the small introduction about the windows. Uh, and let's go through the top panel here first of all okay so you have small icons there not many uh, there's like the, the create new map open map save and sort of stuff stuff here but I'm gonna go through the most important stuff and most important stuff is this uh, tools uh, the most common used tool is this one. It's the transform <coughs> tool. And what this does is when you click object, you can move it to the sides or up and, up and down. By the way, this is my alpha version of a map I'm working on. Not quite finished yet, but I'm gonna use this as introduction purposes only. And the next tool is the rotate tool. Just gonna go through this pretty quick. 
which makes it allows you to rotate object in certain ways. Just gonna revert that so it will look nice. Okay. <coughs> the next next tool is the scaling tool, and this scales the uh, object uh, in a global way. What I mean uh, about that is when you select something and drag one of these boxes it will increase the uh, object in every angle or any axis I mean. So when you drag this it will scale the object in a global way. And the next tool will scale the object in a non-global way. What I mean about that is you can scale this in one axis only if you want that. So you can scale this to become longer, wider or stuff like that or higher. In just one axis. Pretty neat. And <coughs> when working about this tool, with these tools you can use the spacebar to toggle uh, through those tools easily. So spacebar allows you to toggle through those tools easily. And as all level designer knows, hotkeys in programs are the yeah, it's pretty important to use the hotkeys if you want to um, uh, be uh, efficient when you're creating your level. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna go or uh, <coughs> gonna go through is this box right here. So what this does is, oh, sorry, um, uh, when you're using one of these tools, this allows you to uh, choose to use the tool in a local environment or a world environment, and this means that. I can give you an example here. So, mm, pretty bad example. Uh, anyway, you can see this thing is uh, this slope is highlighted, and when it's set to local, it um, allows you to drag it um, with the uh, uh, grid axis, and if you choose world. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I need to find a uh, better example here. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Let's just rotate this. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's rotate this. Like so. And when you're in a world environment, you can drag this up and down according to the uh, grid or the world grid which you can find in these windows there. When you press local, you will transform the um, object after the object's preferences or the grid for the object. So if you click that, you can see that you can drag it um, or the, 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 the tool is snapping after how the object is rotated or placed. So now you can you can play or uh, drag it um, uh, after the object's grid, and this is usually uh, usually or the be it, this is usually um, good to use if you want to align stuff uh, after each other. Let's say I want to align this uh, above the. Uh, uh, cuber. Uh, if you ha if you have world selected, it will become very hard to align. You can see this is kind of impossible. But if we select world, we can align it perfectly above, and the same. You can just align it infinite. So that's pretty neat. <coughs> uh, okay, let's. Just forget about that. 
So the next things that are real important are the build options. So when you do a change in your map, you need to build your map for it to become a, a rendered version. Uh, what I mean is that if you do a change, the the editor doesn't um, apply the change directly. So, if you want to apply a change, you need to build your level. And here you can build the geometry. If you make a cube here, Let's see where the cube is. Okay, so. Here we got the uh, builder cube, and let's just. I'm gonna go through this afterwards. Okay, so <clears throat> when we have built this cube, you can see that it spawns a uh, blue rectangle right and when you move this cube you can see that the blue line moves but what happened here the cube doesn't move this is because you haven't built the geometry for the level so if you click that boom suddenly uh, moves to the right spot because this applies changes same with uh, lighting uh, if you place a, a new light Let's say here, this won't uh, be applied until you have, or applied in a good manner before you build the lighting. Same with uh, any programming you do to your level, you have to build paths and stuff. So, uh, when you always, when you do a lot of changes and you're done with your changes, just build your level. And the easiest way to do this is to build every all. Click the build all uh, button, and this makes the um, or this builds the geometry, the lighting, and paths and nodes. <coughs> so, uh, and the next thing we want to know is this button. This button makes it's kind of looks like a joystick, and this means if you press it, you will uh, jump into the game and play your level. Let's press this now. And let's not hope that it crashed. Where did our game go? Here. Okay, so when we press the button. We jump into the game and we can test the game. Alright. Next thing is this uh, button here. What this does is when you're done editing your level for each version, you need to click this button here. And what this does is to cook your level. <coughs> and this makes it to compress the file so it uh, you can load it easier in the uh, game. And you always want to have a cooked version of the file when you play the level, or else you get, will get an error in game and your level is not uh, successfully uh, finished. <laughs> let's let's put it like that. Okay, and there's two more uh, buttons I want to go through, and it's this button here, <coughs> and this is the generic browser. And when we press this, a window will pop up. And yeah, okay, so this window is where you will find all your assets. So here you can see all assets in game, and you can choose materials or for example 3D models which are called static meshes so here you can find all your meshes meshes inside editor and also here 
in the actor classes tab you'll find the uh, uh, assets which uh, uh, which are stuff like player spawns uh, and for example gem pads and for example vehicles or weapons right <coughs> Okay, and uh, let's just wait with the other tabs because you won't need it. And the next thing is the Kismet window, which are basically where you program in your level. It's a visual programming tool. So, that was the top bar. Now let's go to the window bar. Um, here, uh, the most important stuff are the lighting options. Is the these are the uh, different uh, cube icons here, and w if you click one of them, you will change the preview in your window. How you will see things in a window, so in a manner. So if you click one of these, you will see that you change how you preview your level in a window, and you can have. And lit and lit or lighting only and stuff like that so those are the different options and you can see in the uh, top view and stuff and window <coughs> it's always in wireframe mode because if you have it in uh, 3d viewing uh, preview and lit you can see that it's kind of hard to uh, uh, mm, edit your level because you only want to see <coughs> the wireframe of stuff and you can see that um, when I'm you can see that I'm removing my 3D models and this is done by pressing the W key simply pressing the W key then you move, uh, remove all the 3D models and a fun fact my uh, Entire uh, my 50% of the level is actually 3D models. Okay, next um, the perspective of the window is the PTFS icons, and this goes uh, uh, it. This means the perspective view, the top view, the front view, and the side view. So <coughs> if you click one of these buttons, you can see that we get different angles to view your level and P P is for the 3D viewing uh, viewpoint and the T for top and stuff like that yeah. uh, this is to maximize the viewport and the window and yeah that's basically the most important stuff and this can be neat to use uh, to know about it's um, Basically, the camera speed inside your editor. If you click fast, it will scroll in your uh, viewport real fast. If you select slow, you will scroll uh, very slow. So, <coughs> how do I move around in the viewport? I basically hold down the uh, right button hold it down and you can move uh, you can view or uh, move your camera and I use mostly the scroll wheel to move forward and back backwards you can also use the uh, uh, arrow keys to move side left back and sitting back okay so this is different modes uh, uh, over to the side panel this is different modes uh, you have the camera mode, you have the geometry mode, the terrain mode and the texture alignment I'm not, I'm not going to go into this just yet uh, basically it's the uh, modes for editing if you want to edit the height of your ter terrain you have to press terrain mode the box will pop open and now you can edit your terrain like that and this is because 
I sele selected this mode. Okay, my program <laughs> program is shut down. Okay, there we are. <coughs> Next, here is the uh, BSP uh, editing uh, tools, uh, and if we can find the uh, red box, this basically, oops. This basically changes the shape of your brush, BSP brush. The BSP brush is made for use, uh, creating uh, simple uh, geometry cubes and structures, like this cube right here. So if you click another button here, you can see that it changes down here after which uh, brush we use. So, to the interesting part, um, let's move this brush up a bit and find it. Okay, there it is. <coughs> this is the add geometry or subtract geometry. This button is made to, uh, if you click it, it will add uh, mass. And this button is to add mass, and this is for subtracting mass. If we move this up a bit and click subtract, it will remove geometry mass. And this is to add volume, like for example, gravity or uh, physics, light volume, and uh, blocking volume, and stuff like that. Okay, so I think I've gone through every uh, usual or useful uh, buttons in the editor. Uh, so the next tutorial we will create our first deathmatch map, and I'll go through what uh, what you have to do to create a small deathmatch map. Okay, so I will, my name was Simon. And this was part one of the uh, level design tutorial in Unreal Tournament Editor. And yeah, hope you hope to see you in part two of the tutorial.